Hey everybody, Mr. Urjaish here with another 3D printing project. And in this one, we're gonna look at how can we take the awesome puppet and make our own on a 3D printer. Now, as always, this video is accompanied by an instructable, which you can find below, that has all the details, links, and things to help guide you through creating your own custom 3D printed puppets. Additionally, I create a couple tutorial videos that I'll talk about. Everything you need is linked below. Please also don't forget to subscribe and check out hashtag project today on the at Mr. Urdry social media pages. Pop it, they're awesome. They've been the ultimate stocking stuffer and gift idea for the last two years. And how could you not love them? They're fun to squish, they're fun to pop, they're fun to entertain. You can get them in all different shapes and sizes, pencil cases, Chromebook cases, phone cases, and just the typical pop it. But can we make our own using 3D printing? Well, the short answer is, the long answer is we have to be a little creative with our design. So the way that they actually make poppets is through a mold making process where they essentially just pour hot rubber into a mold, which is how a lot of products are made. This allows them to make really thin, high precision rubber that gives you this lovely, satisfying, now with 3D printing, we have a couple different types of 3D printers. You can use a resin SLA or SLS 3D printer, or you can use an FDM FFF extrusion type 3D printer, as well as a million others that aren't super relevant. A lot of these printers can 3D print flexible rubber, which means you can make rubber like things, but there's some limitations in their ability. So for this project, I'm working with my Lulzbot FDM or FFF 3D printers, where I'm gonna be extruding a TPU flexible rubber filament. And in order to be successful with this, we need to design our models to not only have this poppet ability in terms of engineering, so that way it has the shape that literally mechanically pops, but also can be produced on our printers. And before making this video, I went through a lot of trial and error. And through all this experimentation where I was finding ways to make things that were just wrong and experimenting with different types of filaments and getting lots of failed prints and some that looked really, really promising until it rips, I found a method that works pretty well on a couple different printers and you can design it using a variety of CAD programs. And through this video, I'm gonna walk you through making your very own. So to get started, you need a CAD program or computer aided design. I love Tinkercad if you're kind of getting yourself started and I love Onshape if you're a more advanced user. I've created two extensive tutorials where I guide you through creating your own poppet in both Tinkercad and Onshape, which you can find below. The really important things to keep in mind are first off the size and shape of your poppet. Second, the actual hemisphere type shape of your poppet creating a ring to reinforce your poppet so that way it doesn't just rip every time you pop it. And then also making sure that your thicknesses and your tolerances align with your specific printer. So for example, I'm using a nozzle that is 0.5 millimeters and I use that dimension or measurement throughout my entire design as I create my wall thicknesses, my gaps. And that's really important because when I wasn't aligning specific to my nozzle, I found that I was creating holes that poked right through my poppet or that I would just be, I'd have spaghetti and spaghetti is not what we want. That's not a poppet. So in my CAD tutorials, I talk about these measurements to help optimize it specific to your 3D printer. After you create your design, you export it and drop it into your slicer or the program that creates your G code. For me, I'm using Cura Lulzbot Edition, but there's lots of great ones out there like Cura is used for a ton of different printers and Prusa Slicer and a million other things, right? You can find more details about slicers on my website. And I didn't have to change a whole lot. I had to select the type of TPU I was using and I experimented with all different types. Ninja Flex was by far my favorite option, but I did try Polyflex, both their 95 and their slightly more flexible options. I tried Gizmo Dorks TPU, which I love in general for flexible prints. I think it's the easiest of all of them to print, but it's a little too rigid. I also tried Scene Smarts TPU and a couple other random no-name brands, but by far I found that Ninja Flex just worked the best for this specific application. 
So I selected NinjaFlex in my slicer, which for me is around 225 degrees for the nozzle, 60 degrees for the bed. I didn't change a lot of other settings other than I used the standard layer height, which for my NinjaFlex was 0.32 millimeters per layer. I found that if I went high detail, it didn't necessarily help, it actually made it weaker. And if I went a little bit lower, a little bit thicker of a layer height, I found that it was more likely to rip. So 0.32 millimeters worked really, really well. I did step up my first layer height to be 0.5 millimeters, which corresponded with the design. I made my base 1.5 millimeters, so three times the thickness of my first layer, which I found stopped my poppet from ripping during the popping process, which isn't what you want. I then raised my infill density up to 60%, which made my gaps around 0.8 millimeters for my line walls, which is what I designed it to be in my CAD program. And then the only other thing I recommend you do is up your skirt. I don't personally need to use any type of bed adhesion, so there's no rafts, there's no supports, there's no brims, but the skirt is the outer perimeter. And I like to do the skirt three or four times, so that way when I'm printing my first layer, I can make sure that I have really solid bed adhesion, because that's by far the most important thing. To actually get my Lulzbot Mini ready for this, uh, most Lulzbot 3D print heads can handle both rigid and flexible filament right out of the box, so I didn't have to modify my print head at all. I just flipped my bed over so that way I was printing on glass rather than PEI, and I applied a glue stick just to help with some bed adhesion, which is specific for TPU. After calibrating my first layer, making sure that I had good bed adhesion, I let my printer print and watch my project come to life. So this is one of those projects that's kind of, well, I was going to say instant reward, but there was a lot of troubleshooting and prototyping to get there. But now that I've made it, this is a pretty cool project. And the question becomes, is it as poppet as a poppet? No, no, it's definitely more rigid. So if I were to use one of these off the shelf brand poppets, I mean, zero effort to pop it in and out. Very, very easy. This is a little bit more stiff, a little bit more rigid. It's not difficult and it does spring back and pop beautifully. But to push it through, it's definitely a little bit more rigid. And that makes sense because this is thicker of a material than this. But when I found that I tried to get thinner and closer to the off the shelf tolerances, that's where I just started to run through a million different print issues. So I think these measurements and these tips work pretty well to make an actual useful poppet that you can pop in and out time and time again. And it's custom. It's any shape you want, any design you want. So I hope you really enjoyed this video. I hope you entertain yourself not only with the project, but through the project. And again, please don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for future 3D printing and other random videos and projects on my social media, on my project today, and on my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and enjoy.